Okay. Hi, everybody. I am going live for the first time. So bear with me while I make sure that all of my technology works. <laughs> um, hopefully you all can hear me okay. If you can post in the comments and let me know that you can hear me, that would be awesome. And then I can get started on some fun stenciling tips and tricks. Happy Tuesday. We've got Thanksgiving coming up in two days. So my kids are home. Hopefully they will not cause too much trouble while we're doing this live stream. Hi, Marcy. Can you hear me okay? I think I'm not seeing any comments saying you can't hear me. So I'm going to go ahead and go with it thinking you can hear me. So hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, hopefully we get a couple more people coming in here for the live to see what's going on. Get to know me a little bit better. I'm happy to. Oh, good. You can hear me. Thanks, Marcy. Um, get to know me a little bit better look at some stenciling tips and tricks so you can use those in your own card making uh, and thank you so much everybody i have hit over a thousand subscribers i really really appreciate it i love that everybody has subscribed um, if you're new and just popping in for this live definitely subscribe to this channel there are lots of fun card making tip and trick videos here as well as tutorials and other fun card making stuff and some other general crafting things probably in the future as well so i am going to go ahead and jump in and i'm going to see if i can't get my overhead here to work oh thanks marcy yeah these are fun earrings marcy said she likes my earrings you know, you guys probably watch Jennifer McGuire too. Um, she does these closet crafty chats and she had talked about how during the pandemic, um, she decided to start wearing earrings every day uh, to feel like things were a little bit more normal. And so I followed her lead and I think it's very helpful. Okay, so here's what we're gonna start with. We've got this really pretty stencil. This is from Simon Says Stamp. And after this live is done, I will down in the comments post links to everything. It is the, oh, I don't know. I put the packaging somewhere. I don't remember what it's called. So first we're going to tape down the stencil. I'm just using a three and a half or excuse me, four and a quarter by five and a half piece of 80 pound Nina cardstock. And we're going to do some basic stenciling but then we're gonna do some fun stuff on top. So I'm just taping the stencil on the back of my cardstock here. And we're gonna use a fun color combination. We're gonna use Distress Oxide Chip Sapphire, Shabby Shutters, and Lucky Clover. So not your typical holiday combination, but it looks really pretty, you'll see when you're done. So I've got my blending brushes here. I'm gonna start with the Chip Sapphire. And I'm gonna do this kind of on an angle. So I'm gonna come in and just get a nice good coat on the diagonal. And when I'm working with stencils like this, I do like to use a pretty heavy hand on my inks. I've been playing with this stencil a lot today to kind of see what I wanted to do for the live. Hi, Carrie. And I, um, I bent it in a few spots. So here's your first tip. If you bend your stencil, because they have these tiny little fine pieces, you know, inside, what I like to do is I like to just run it through my die cut machine a couple of times. It helps flatten it back out. So now I'm coming in with some Lucky Clover and I'm going to do the other side here on a diagonal as well. 
it doesn't make it as nice as it was when you first got it out of the package. Boy, there's nothing better than a new crafting tool when it comes right out of the package in all of its glory. But a well-loved crafting tool is fun too. All right, got a nice good coat on there. Now the nice thing about the blending brushes is that you can use them for color families. I'm just getting a paper towel. So I'm just gonna wipe off this Lucky Clover and come in with some shabby shutters with the same brush. I'm gonna do this in the middle. All right, once we get a nice little coat there of the shabby shutters, kind of blend it in to your other colors. You just lightly sort of rub it in into the colors on the other two sides. And you can always come back with your brush that has a little bit of color left on it from your other colors and bring it back down in. Feel like the blue needed to come down in there okay so this first technique we're going to do it's really cool we're actually not going to remove the stencil we're going to keep it on there and you're, we're just going to wipe off it's a little time consuming but we're going to wipe off the stencil just being careful to actually you know what this is going to take too long i'm on a live so we'll do it this way we're going to take this off because what i want to do is normally i would let it just air dry and wipe off the stencil to do the next step but i am going to dry it with my heat it tool if you guys haven't seen these, they're similar to heat guns, except for they have um, less heat output and they're much quieter. So they're really good for drying things. So I just wanna make sure this Distress Oxide is really good and dry because we are gonna put another layer on top of it. How is everybody? Any Thanksgiving Day plans? Anything fun going on? We are just having dinner here at our house. My husband is cooking. He is the Thanksgiving Day cook in our house. So I will be the sous chef, the person who gets to follow around and clean up all the dishes. I don't know. I think he's got the good end of the deal. What do you guys think? All right, we've got that good and dry. And now I'm gonna come in and clean off my stencil. The nice thing about the Distress inks and the Distress Oxide is you can just spray your stencil with water and it comes right off. Just be careful because you don't want to bend your stencil which is something I do all the time. I'm kind of heavy handed with my stencils. I wish there was a way to make them not so delicate. Oh, <laughs> Marcy. <laughs> I don't think we'll have enough food. Marcy said, what time should we be there? I think he's got a pretty good menu planned too. I'm excited. Okay, I think that's pretty clean. We'll find out, see if it works on this next step. You know, when you're doing YouTube videos and you're not live, it's really easy. Like, because if you mess up, and trust me, I mess up, you can just re-record and no one is the wiser. But when you are live, things don't go according to plan, it's 
a little more tricky. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna take our card panel and I'm just gonna line the stencil back up. And let's see if I can figure out where it was. No. If you're ever trying to line up stencils, try to find one image. In this case, I was looking at the flower that you can sort of follow with your eye and just keep flipping. And you know if you get all the way around and you haven't found the match, then you probably have your stencil upside down and you can flip it over. See there, I've got that little bent bit. I'm gonna try and straighten it a little bit with my nail. Oh, thanks Marcy, you're sweet. She said you're among friends. No one will ever know, right? <laughs> okay, I think we've got this on there, right? Okay, so we're gonna tape this back down. And normally I save a lot of my tape, but pay no attention if I use a lot of tape during the live. Okay. And I'm gonna tape this in a couple of spots because what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in with some embossing powder. All right, so for this technique, you're gonna to wanna to use some type of embossing ink. This is just Versamark embossing ink. And hopefully my Distress Oxides are dry enough for this. But once you have the stencil down, you're just going to tamp the embossing ink right over where you stenciled. Get a nice good coat. And then you can peel your stencil up. Set it off to the side here somewhere so I can get it again. And for this, I am using the Hero Arts embossing powder in Sparkle. This is kind of a fun color to use for this technique because then it's um, you see it kind of all glittery on top of your stenciled image. Just sprinkle it on and then tap it off. The nice thing too about the sparkle one is it's not that big of a deal if you get little spots of embossing powder where they're not supposed to go. And once you've got that good and covered, and just pour your embossing powder back in. I just use a sheet of copy paper when I'm doing my embossing. That way if it gets all mucky, I can just easily get a new sheet. Oh, I know Marcy. Marcy said so many products, so little money. I see a million things I wanna buy and I have to tell myself no. New, we have a budget. Wouldn't it be nice if you could have all the things? But you know what, then then I feel like if you have too much stuff, you get overwhelmed and you don't know where to begin. So I generally try to get something knowing that I'm gonna use it for a video or something like that. And then I keep it in a bin and I reach for it and that's what I use. Okay, it's gonna be a little bit loud. Got my heat gun gonna let that heat up you just wave it back and forth as you're getting the embossing powder to melt It's always like magic when you do this. I like watching it on the videos because it's sped up and it really looks magical. Alrighty. 
think I got it all. Okay. I'm going to hold it up so you guys can see a little better. How fun is that? You get all of that beautiful sparkle from the embossing powder, plus the raised texture. And then underneath it, you have your ink blending. I love this technique. What do you guys think? Fun stuff. Okay, let's move on to our second technique. This one, I haven't cleaned my stencil, so I'm gonna do the next one that I have planned that uses embossing as well. I've got a couple of different techniques here to show you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna come in. I'm just gonna take another white panel, get it down. I'm gonna use that same Versamark. Oh, thank you, Marcy. Thanks, Carrie. Isn't that a fun technique? I love it. I have plans to see how many different ways I can use stencils. They're so versatile and they're relatively inexpensive, which is nice. They're a low price point. Uh oh, I gotta move this. I don't know if any of you have a Cricut. I also have a video that shows how to make stencils with your Cricut, which is kind of fun. All right, we're gonna set this off to the side again. We're gonna come back in with that same embossing powder. Oh, Carrie said she had, would have no room if she got everything. That's the other problem. It's like, where do you put it all? I have a pretty big sized craft room. I'm, I'm very lucky um, in that regard. This is kind of my dream craft space that I have. And uh, I've always lived in smaller houses than the house that we bought this house over the summer. And um, I knew I was going to have this space as my crafting room, which was super exciting. I had for many years, well, for a couple of years anyway, been crafting in the dining room. So I'm sure some of you know what that is like. I had my little desk in a corner and there was no room to do anything. Ah, so frustrating. Oh, cutting, Marcy said she has always wanted to cut some stencils by hand. That'd be fun. Um, do you mean like with a craft knife? I don't think I'm talented enough to do that. <laughs> All right, heat gun coming back on. You can also use die cuts uh, to create stencils with your die cutting machine, which is kind of fun. You just buy the mylar and then I would suggest like in, taking a piece of paper and sort of sketching out what you wanted your final stencil to look like using the die cuts. And then you could go through and cut out all the pieces using your die cutting machine. Marcy, you are far more talented than I am then. I, I think I would muck it up if I was trying to cut it with a craft knife. All right, I think I got all the spots there. Okay. I'm gonna move some of this stuff out of the way because for this next step, we are going to use a splat box. Yay! Very exciting. And I am just gonna use that same piece of paper I was using for the embossing. So we have this nice embossed image now. Uh-oh, I don't think I had it melted all the way. 
I sure didn't. Look at that. See, you guys get to see on live YouTube live what not to do. Make sure you melt all of your embossing powder. Well, you'll still get to see the technique, so let's roll with it. I am using some mica stain. And when you use this, it has little mica flakes in it. You just need to make sure it's shook up really, really well. Oh, a wood burning tool. I think to make the stencils, Marcy, Marcy said, can you use a wood burning tool? Um, I don't know. I would think like the melted plastic would not smell great. Okay, so you're gonna spray with your mica stain. You guys will still get a sense of what the effect is here. And then you're just gonna take a paper towel, blot the top. And look at that, isn't that cool? It's an emboss resist, but you've done it with your stencil and spray stain. Isn't that fun? I love this color. I didn't say the color. It is snow flurries. These were a limited time mica spray stain, but there are lots of different ones out on the market that you could definitely use for this type of technique or any spray stains that you have. It doesn't have to be a mica one. You could use any kind of spray stain. Okay, let's set this guy aside. I'm gonna clean up my workspace a little bit. Thanks, Marcy. Oh, that's the spirit. I know, you just gotta kind of roll with it when you're doing a live. Um, I was, I normally don't get too nervous, but for some reason I was really nervous about doing this live. I think it's because the kids are home and I was like, oh, what if someone gets hurt? Or what if, you know, that they start fighting or something? I have three boys and you just never know um, how they're gonna do. But thus far, they have, they've stayed quiet. So let's hope that that continues. Okay, for the next one, I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my stencil because I am gonna need it clean for this next technique. I think I'm looking for the most to pie. <laughs> What's everyone's favorite dish at Thanksgiving? I know a couple of years, um, we have family in Colorado and we used to have, um, different kinds of events. And for Thanksgiving one year we did like everyone brought a, um, Mexican dish. That was kind of fun. I make some mean green chili turkey enchiladas. They were tasty. So you guys just saw, here's a tip. If you need to clean embossing ink or any kind of um, dye ink that won't come off, that's like a permanent dye ink, you can use rubbing alcohol. And I buy this one that's in a spray bottle. Um, I find this really super helpful. I think I bought this off of Amazon. So I'll link that too in case anyone's interested if I remember. Then, when you're cleaning your stencil, if you're doing it on a mat, sometimes it gets stuck down to the mat, just use like a little pokey tool or something to, to pop it up. Um, otherwise you'll break your fingernails. Ask me how I know. I have, I have like, look at this you guys. I have all these broken fingernails. I don't know what's going on. I think my fingernails are mad at me. <laughs> oh, you guys. Okay, Marcy says my mother's stuffing. Mmm. Carrie says mashed potatoes and pie. Yeah. Can I have some mashed potatoes with some stuffing on it and some pie to go with it? That's gonna be an excellent meal. Okay, we've got a clean stencil. We're gonna set this off to the side. And we're gonna come in. Oop. 
That's not what I wanted. I'm going to get a clean panel. And I'm going to get a piece of post-it tape. Good morning, Bernice from Sydney, Australia. Oh, someday, Bernice, I'm coming to visit you. I've always wanted to go to Australia, and someday I'll make it there. All right, for the sake of efficiency, we are going to use the same three colors that we used for our other technique, but it's gonna look completely different. I'm gonna start with Lucky Clover. And the post-it tape is just to keep ink off your fingers and also keep fingerprints off of your panel. That helps quite a bit. I'm a messy crafter though, which goes against everything else because I'm kind of a, a bit of a neat freak otherwise. But while I'm crafting, I make a huge mess. There's like, if you guys could see my desk right now already and it just started, there's stuff everywhere already. Which is why I, I believe it or not, I do. I clean up my entire space every time I am done with a crafting session. Because if I don't, everything will like just get lost in the abyss, never to be seen again. All right, now I'm coming in with that chip sapphire. I'm gonna spin this around. I'm glad I, I, I wasn't sure I was thinking that I was picking a good time where I might pick up um, some people down in Australia because I've seen a couple of you guys commenting on my videos and liking them. I love it. And I thought, you know, I think going in the afternoon, the late afternoon, I'm on Pacific time, might um, make it so that we can get some friends from the other side of the globe. Okay, so that was Chip Sapphire. Now I'm coming in with Shabby Shutters. I do wanna make sure my you guys see that my little color clip went flying there's these little clips that go on the um, middle part of the brush I'll find it Marcy says wow I want to get there someday you and me both Marcy we should plan a trip I don't think my husband would be happy with me if I said, I'm off to Australia with my crafting buddy. No, he'd probably be fine with it, but I, I couldn't leave him with all of the uh, craziness that's here all the time. I some, um, sometimes watch House Hunters, House Hunters International. I don't know if you guys watch that show at all. And there have been a couple episodes where they go to Australia. Beautiful, beautiful country. Continent, for that matter. All right, so I'm just blending these all together. And the, the key to blending, if you guys are, um, if you struggle with blending, is for me anyway, what works really well is you put all of your colors down and then you go back with your colors that are on the outer edges and blend them back into the middle color. That's what works best for me. So I'm gonna close up the shabby shutters and I'm gonna bring in a little bit more Lucky Clover. Do they celebrate things like a similar type of holiday to Thanksgiving in Australia, like on a different day? 
I know Canada has a Thanksgiving day, but it's on a different day from the US. Do they have anything like that? Bring hubby with me. You're right, Bernie Solent. But then who's gonna watch the kids? And they can fend for themselves, right? Okay. This is gonna smooth out a little bit more as well as it dries. And with the technique I'm doing, I'm not too worried and I don't wanna keep you guys here all day while I try and get the perfect blend. So I'm gonna set these aside. Clean off my work surface. I have, so Marcy asked how old my kids are. I have a seven year old, an 11 year old, and a 17 year old. And you would think the 17 year old could watch the other two while I went off to Australia, but um, probably not the greatest idea. <laughs> Just gonna be honest with you. Uh, not the most responsible kiddo. Good kid, but not the most responsible. Okay, so what we're gonna do for this technique We've got the stencil down and I'm just gonna tape it. You don't really need to tape it for this technique, but better safe than sorry. And then I have this little mini mister and you can see kind of down in there. I keep this with perfect pearls. Bernie says, no, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Darn. Well, I will have a piece of pie in your honor, Bernice. So you want, I keep this off to the side in my craft room. I use it all the time for various things. Um, but it's just a little water and a little bit of perfect pearls in the pearl powder. You do wanna make sure you shake it up before you use it. So this is really fun to use over Distress Ink or Distress Oxide with a stencil. This will just mist it over. I like to use a fair bit so I can really get the sparkle from the perfect pearls. And then I'm just gonna take a paper towel and sort of dab it here. You know, I think Bernice, we will at some point. Bernice said bring the whole family here. There's plenty of things to do. Yeah, I think we are definitely, the kids are old enough now that I think we will at some point do a um, international family trip, which will be fun. So there are the perfect pearls in water. Isn't that awesome? So you get, because you're using the water in the mini mister, you get the distress oxide normal reaction that you would get if you sprayed water on it or put water droplets. And then because you have the perfect pearls in there, you also get that beautiful pearlescent effect. So pretty. Okay. All right, so that is number three. Thank you, Carrie. Find a spot for that guy. Clean off my stencil. See, I told you guys I would end up with tape all over my desk. I promise you, if I was normally crafting, I would save the tape and I would use it again. There's just too much going on. <laughs> so I am going to clean this again with rubbing alcohol just because I was using the uh, Perfect Pearls. Thank you, Marcy. Have you guys ever done that before? Use that um, Perfect Pearls in a sprayer like that? I like to use it for all kinds of stuff. Oh, 
thank you, Bernice. Yeah, it's a relatively simple technique, but it really like is really, really pretty to look at. I don't know if you guys can hear my dog. He's decided that he wants in the craft room. I have the door closed. If he doesn't stop, I'll probably have to let him in. Okay. So last technique. This one is a lot of fun. And again, we're gonna be using some non-traditional holiday colors. So bear with me. It looks really cool when it's done. At first you're like, what? That doesn't look right at all. And then all of a sudden it comes together. It's lots of fun. We are going to use Distress Ink in Candied Apple and Brushed Corduroy. Marcy said, no, but I will. And Carrie said, no, but now I want to try it. Yes, try. It is so fun. I love trying to like come up with different things to use. Okay. We are going to start with the brushed corduroy and I'm just using these domed phone daubers. I'll link to them below. These make blending with the inks much, much easier, much, much easier. Bernice says, no, I have never used perfect pearls. They're fun. They've been around for a long time. Um, there are lots of different techniques. I'll probably do a video just on perfect pearls, but there are already a bunch of videos out there. You could just search up perfect pearl techniques and uh, you're gonna find a lot of stuff. Simon Hurley did a really cool video with his stamping foam with perfect pearls. Um, I was really impressed with what he managed to do. Okay, so we are coming in here with the brush corduroy. Uh-oh, somebody is at my door and the doggie is barking. <laughs> okay. Flipping around to the other side here. So these little daubers make it really easy, the domed ones, to ink blend. You do, however, need to get quite a bit of ink on them every time you come in. All right, I know you're what you're thinking. That is not Christmassy, but it will be Christmassy holiday E by the time I'm done. We're gonna come in the center with candied apple. We're gonna bring this on pretty heavy. You just make sure when you're using inks, um, they're a little different from oxides. So oxides have pigment qualities to them, ink and pigment qualities. So they're somewhat opaque and they layer really well. Whereas the Distress inks, they can look kind of muddled because the ink colors are just mixing rather than layering when you put them on the paper. So you do need to be somewhat careful about the color choices you make when you're doing ink blending with the inks. I usually do most of my blending with oxides. Oxides are also a lot easier to blend with than the inks are. But this technique looks really cool with the inks. So now that I have the red done on the center there, I'm gonna come back in with the brush corduroy again just to blend these together really well. Okay. I 
think for purposes of our live, that is probably good for right now. Let me move these out of the way. Set these aside. The other thing too, Bernice, is the perfect pearls, they last forever. I would say if you're gonna get any, um, start out with, there is a, a pack that has gold and the original pearl color, and that will keep you covered for a long time. Okay, we are going to make sure these inks are super dry. So I'm coming in with the heat tool. And they do make this in a um, European version as well for the voltage there. I thought that was pretty cool. The crafting community is so inclusive of everybody everywhere. They're, it's international. I love that. I love that I can meet you guys from other countries online. You can't say that a lot about a lot of hobbies. Where did you get the spray bottle? The Mini Mister? Um, I bought that, I believe, at scrapbook.com. I'll link to everything that I'm using and down in the bottom description after this live. Once I go back through, I'll probably do an edit of it and have that available on my YouTube channel as well. But I'll be sure to link everything They sell them by themselves and then they also sell them in packs of three. And it's nice to get it in a pack of three because then you have one that you can keep with uh, perfect pearls in it all the time. And then you can have another one just to use for various other things that you're working with. I used it in the stamping foam video as well. It works pretty nice because you get a really, with the mini mister, you get even more of a fine mist than you do with the regular distress, distress sprayer. Blech. I always have trouble saying that. So I have both. I have the regular distress, distress sprayer, and then I have these mini misters. So my paper did warp a little bit from the heat. So I am gonna be a little heavy handed here with getting it down. And then I keep one blending brush that I only use for my white pigment ink. And because I wanna make sure that none of this ink actually makes its way into um, the ink pad, I am going to just kind of smush some here on my crafting mat and I'll pick it up from there. I'm just going to go in with this pigment ink. So we used the translucent dye inks and now we're coming in with an opaque pigment ink. So you are not going to see the colors very much through this white ink. You wanna make sure to get a fairly good coating of the pigment ink. So that way it shows up really well on your card. I'm gonna go ahead and smoosh a little bit more out. Now, if I had the chance to sort of do it all over again, I think I'd get blending brushes for my dye inks and for my oxides, but I had already had um, had my dye inks before I had any oxides um, and it just didn't make sense for me to repurchase 
brushes at that point. I still might do it. I think I might ask for it for Christmas. We'll see. Okay, so here we go. Look at that beautiful white pigment ink on top of those colors. But we're still not done. There's one more thing I wanna show you, but I'm gonna dry this first. You really wanna make sure this is dry before you do the next step. Normally I would just set this aside and wait until it had air dried. But it is nice having this heat it tool because it allows me, especially for these lives, to come in and dry my panels a lot faster. Oh, thanks, Marcy. Marcy said that's a lovely technique. Isn't it fun? I like to see how I can use uh, pigment ink on different stuff because it has such a different, different properties from the dye ink and same vice versa. Like see if I can use dye ink on something that's pigment related and you get lots of different kinds of outcomes. Okay, that's good enough for our purposes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my stamping platform. And I need a paper towel. Okay. Don't need the magnets for this, so I'm gonna set those aside. I'm gonna put a paper towel, and that's only because I'm gonna be using some black dye ink, and I don't wanna get it on my little mat that is behind there. In fact, I might do it this, like this. The mat does clean off pretty easily. I just would rather not deal with it at all if I can avoid it. Judy said, I saw that Picket Fence has their life-changing brushes as a Black Friday doorbuster. Ooh, nice. I might have to take a look at that. These ones that I have are Gina K. I really like them. And I've had several people ask me like, what's the best blending brush to get or stuff like that. Really from what I've heard from everybody else, um, they're really pretty similar. You know, they're makeup grade, so they're really soft, densely packed bristles. And that's what you want. You wanna make sure you have densely packed soft bristles. So really it's about sort of what you want things to look like in your craft room. Oops, dropping my stamp. I didn't get it on there well enough. Okay, so I'm using the Friendship Background Stamp from Simon Says Stamp for this. And I'm coming in with Intense Black. I'm kind of out of space here. So bear with me and I'm just going to ink this up. Adding a background stamp with text on it will up the game on your cards. I'm telling you, it will just bring it to a whole new level. It adds an extra layer of texture that you wouldn't have otherwise, and it just makes your card panel more dynamic. All right, let's cut that ink on there. Marcy said Gina K is having a sale starting at noon tomorrow. I might have to check that out because since I do already have the Gina K brushes, I'm thinking it might be nice to, um, if I do get another one, oh, or I might have to tell my husband about it, getting matching ones. So don't mind me, I hope I don't get this inky, but I wanted to kind of try and curve this and flatten it a little bit. 
and I stuck my finger in the ink. It's always a fun time here on Dream Craft Create. You never know what's going to happen. Okay, we're coming in and you are going to want to put down some really good pressure. I'm using a pressure tool. I love this pressure tool. I don't know if you guys have seen this or not. It's a butterfly. Okay, I think we have got that good and stamped. Ta-da! All right. Look at how cool. I told you it would look holiday-y. You wouldn't think with the brown and the red, but once you add the white and the black in, it really has this like vintage Santa Claus look to it with that color combination. Love it. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, I'm gonna bring back in all the panels, guys, so you can see them all, all the ones that we did. So there's that one. Here is the embossed resist with the mica spray stain. And then here was the really pretty glitter emboss that we did with the stencil. And then where's my perfect pearls one? What happened to it? Oh, here it is. Don't mind my hair, just reaching over. And there is that perfect pearls one. So same stencil, four completely different looks. These came out so nice. I'm really happy that um, apart from the little mishap with the heat embossing there, I was able to do this for you guys without anything getting messed up. Um, oh, thank you, Marcy. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you, Bernice. I'm really happy with how these came out. Now I have to pick out some sentiments and make these into cards. Um, but I hope you guys will give some of these techniques a try. Like I said, I will make sure that I go in and um, link everything that I used in the description once I am done with this live. It'll probably be later this evening, so you know, check back in a couple hours and it should probably be there. But I hope everybody has a wonderful afternoon, evening, morning, um, wherever you are in the world. Thank you so much for watching my first live ever. And I can switch so you guys can see me. Yay, hi. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you guys stuck around, that you watched me through here till the end. I hope you guys have a lovely Thanksgiving if you celebrate Thanksgiving where you are. Um, otherwise, if you don't, you should just eat pie anyway because pie is amazing. So thanks everybody. I will see you again soon with another video. Bye.